For this afternoon, we've got a series of presentations that we'd like to go through, and I'm sure all of them will hold uh, some value and, and information for you. But today we want to talk about, uh, again, the uh, strategy and evolution of enterprise quality and integrated management systems. And Anthony's going to join us to do that. I'll talk about uh, Anthony's bio in just a moment. So product development and manufacturing has evolved through changes in the standards, many different standards that we've seen and that we all know and, uh, and work with dearly. Customer requirements, products have also become more, uh, more complex. Obviously, uh, you know, since, uh, since the time of the early arrival of, uh, of COVID, we've all gone or, or many of us have gone to a remote type of work uh, workforce. And we've got many different types of compliance requirements and, and constraints within the supply chain. However, it is important that, that uh, organizations do have a process to unify their quality management system. You know, the old way of doing things like, uh, like working in Excel or working in, in email, that doesn't work anymore, right? And so Omnix for many years now has supplied an enterprise-wide quality information suite. And so we're going to talk about how we can use that, uh, that uh, application software to help the organization with its management system. Again, most important for people to recognize is that we have to collaborate, right? We can't uh, we can't just coordinate, but we need to collaborate and we need to communicate as well too. So introducing Anthony John here, Anthony is a good friend of mine. Anthony is also our vice president of Omnex Systems. He's been around for 20 years with, uh, with a great deal of experience transforming technology across many, many different types of mar uh, different markets. So from automotive, aerospace, oil, and natural gas and insurance. He currently leads our product development for our EWQMIS or QIMS system, uh, which is our software for managing enterprise quality and APQP. And so we have many, many clients that use that software with us, including driving that down through the supply chain and supplier quality by many of the 500 companies that are out there, our OEMs, and of course, many of our partners. So without further ado, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn that over to Anthony. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening for the participants who have uh, joined us online. Um, I hope you are enjoying this uh, conference so far. I am you know, excited. The first half of this, uh, you know, what we listened today. Um, going back to what Brian said this morning, how requirements are so important. I told Mars, Mars, give me a slot when there's absolutely going to be the, the least number of questions. And he got me a one o'clock start. I forgot to tell him that, hey, don't do it right after my lunch. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> if I am in that drowsy state and off the safe zone, you know, you could start asking questions. All right. So the topic uh, that I'm going to cover today is on uh, strategy and evolution of uh, enterprise uh, quality and integrated management system. Okay, um, we'll talk about how the um, the ev evolution of uh, enterprise quality, health and safety, environmental softwares came into play. What is the what is the new automotive QMS look like? Right. I mean, we talked about all these different standards. What does that mean for us? What is the disruption that's happening in the marketplace? I spoke to some of you about your experience and uh, and, and, and it, it so happens that my presentation is also talking about that. What is digitalization, the strategy of digitalization and how are, you know, uh, a, a platform like EWQMS could actually satisfy your new age um, automotive QMS, okay? Uh, before I start the presentation, um, most of you are here are engineers or have uh, engineer team engineering teams that work with you. If you ask to pick one tool that your engineering team to say, hey, anything I want to do with actions, meetings, timing, FMEA, AD, what is that one tool that, you, that they'll pick? Think about it because I'm a mind reader and the winner is Excel. Right? <laughs> Can anybody disagree that that is the the tool that everybody goes after, and and that is the evolution. That's how you know most of the uh, enterprise quality started. I mean, the Stone Age was paper writing in hand, and and then we are here with spreadsheets. Oh. <laughs> 
So spreadsheets, so we had these documents managed in separate spreadsheets. We have the customer issues, internal audits. All of them were separate individual search spreadsheets stored in, stored in your computer or in some network drive and, and managed. And then, you know, would the, the silo software uh, started to present as a, a potential solution, but then, uh, you know, they were only addressing a specific need, right? They had an FMEA software or a document control software, an audit software, and none of this talked inside the organization. Right? Then what happened? The, the standards started to evolve, right? So we had the 14, the requirement for 14,001 came in. Uh, earlier, the 45,001 was the 18,001. So all these new standards for environmental health and safety started coming into, uh, into the picture. And then industry decided to create a separate software for QMS, separate software for environmental, separate software for new product development. And again, these softwares were not talking to each other. Believe it or not, many of the customers that we transition, right, were in some in one of these states even today. Right. Now, so what is the modern day QMS, right? What, what, what is the definition of it? Okay, why do we need modern day QMS? One, we want the automotive QMS to support the traditional quality, environmental, health, and safety, and all that the proliferation of new standards. We've been talking about 26262, ASPIs, ISO 2134 for 21434 for cybersecurity, ISO 27001 for infrastructure cybersecurity, uh, ISO 21448 for SARDF. Now all these standards has emerged into the automotive industry with the growth of EV and AV. Okay. Now the organizations now have to face the reality of new standards that they need to support uh, with, the, with the tool. Complex products, right? We heard Ramo talk about a, a product that is something what you have not even, you know, uh, thought of, right? And then these hardware, software being developed in different parts of the world. Um, your workforce that you're working today, uh, yeah, you know, they, they are struggling with these big challenges and products. And important is that your requirements, HARA, safety goals, safety requirements, and much more DFMEAs, PFMEAs, they all need to be integrated together, uh, together. And information has to seamlessly flow. Right? Now, let's talk about collaborating with engineering teams. Pre-COVID, it was much easier to get all your cross-functional team into a meeting room, at least with one month notice, right? And today, your own team, you are in a hybrid mode. The day you come to the office, they're not there. I know some of my team members never come into the office that I go into. <laughs> but and, and even worse is the supply chain. It's, it's, it's all over the map. Right? How do you manage that challenge? Historically, and I think we, we had Chad and Dave talk about it, how... Um, you know, hardware was a whole separate department. Mechanical was a separate department. I don't know you. You don't know me. Maybe we are cousins. <laughs> so that's a, that's a story. But we need them all integrated together as one system. Now, conducting audits, assessment, reviews, like that, I can continue and go on. So all these are your new age requirements in automotive QMS, Okay. So on the right-hand side, you see that honeycomb picture with all those different requirements all overlapped and stacked on one another, only because there's so much of data information that needs to be passed on. So if I have to you know, summarize, what do you need? What would, would, would an automotive QMS look like on a 30,000 foot? It needs to have quality QHSE and compliance management, a whole new product development, uh, solution, a solution that can help with all your EVAV work products, the new standards we talked about, and uh, and manage your supply, right? And they all needs to be integrated together as one system. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, disruptions that's happening in the marketplace. Is one of a um, uh, um, uh, a, uh, a screen graph from uh, McKinsey report. 
it talks about the top CEO, you know, the, the CEOs that they need to be aware of. What is the disruption that they need to be looking at? First is the rise of dif disruptive technologies. Okay, today cloud is is everything. Right? The 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 introduction of cloud has suddenly given access to data, access to compute, access to storage, which was not available in the past. We we are now talking about uh, on the air update, which is coming out of a common central cloud. So why should quality systems and new product systems not be on cloud? Right? AI, AI is there since the 1950s. Artificial intelligence is my personal, uh, you know, favorite topic. And um, with what what happened in the industry recently, I mean, boy, with Chat GPT four, they made a splash, right? Everybody woke up to AI and looked at AI in a whole different dimension. You know, it was there with your Alexas and with your Google, and now. It's there with Google Bard, you have Microsoft Copilot, so many other AI solutions that's already there in place. And it's not the future, it is now, it's happening right now. With, with cloud and AI and also IIoT, IIoT are the idea of industrial um, internet of things where you could place sensors on missions where you had not never before able to access some of these data from these systems are now are accessible through sensors. And these this data is with high velocity and high variability. And they come at you at every single second if you want it to be. So cloud AI and IoT is going to complement all of them. Supply chain disruption. With the geopolitical risk and also you know, supply chain spread over across the globe, there is a big supply chain disruption. How are you going to switch suppliers? What about the knowledge base that you had with a particular supplier? You cannot process all Excel PDF files and, and, and through and, and understand what was the product you received from a particular supplier. Look at um, the new workforce that is joining. Right? The, the, the new workforce that is coming into the um, uh, coming to work, are IT savvy millennials and Gen Zs. They were born with internet and mobile. And today they're entering the workforce where we have the traditional spreadsheets and silo systems inside the organization. So what is the key here? The key takeaway here is digitalizing all of this, right? Have information inside the company and, you know, so what is digitalization? McKinsey and Gardner has given two reviews, uh, two viewpoints. I like the one that Gardner has written. Digitalization is the use of digital technologies to change a business model and provide new revenue and value producing opportunities. It is a process of moving to a digital business. Okay. So we talked about cloud, AI, and IoT are newer technologies, but the traditional web and um, uh, technologies will mobility will continue to you know help with digitalization so let's talk about a quick example of what the digitalization is right. so imagine uh, a new product workflow we start with an RFQ there is an impact analysis and there's program management imagine the idea that one program could have functional safety products could have software products that go into it a cybersecurity product and an APQP, overall APQP management. All of these project plans could be managed together in one single platform. Look at the power of the system where your disintegrated teams are now coming into one location to know what is your launch plan, when each of these products needs to be delivered, okay? Now, with each of those work products that you have, you can also have a linked development of, for example, your DFMEAs, DVPNRs, HARAs, test plans, process flow FEMA, control plan, work instruction, and any other documents that are part of the new product development could be digitalized and managed. Okay. 
that integrates to uh, that generates PPAP and MES and of course conduct all TPM activity. So the idea here is that you are digitalizing your enterprise. Okay, data is the new electricity, but it's not going to charge your EV car. So don't ask me. Don't uh, disclaimer. <laughs> don't ask me that. But data is the new electricity. So how does organization go about implementing um, a, a framework like this? The first step you have to do is implement the foundation systems, right? You're able to have an integrated system that helps develop managing requirements, developing your risk documents like FMEA, HARA, TARA, managing your failures, your audits. Uh, your inspection, all this is your foundation system that you need to maintain and manage. Going from there, you are able to look at business intelligence. Data is now available for you to analyze, slice and dice the way you want it. And of course, make it mobile friendly so you are able to have this information available anytime, anywhere you want then implement AI into that framework. Now with AI, you will be able to see a lot of new insights on how uh, your quality data, you can come up with predictive analysis, you can do validations, recommendations. Um, I think this uh, this evening, Pete, uh, Peter Bovinsky is gonna be talking about how AI is going, is, help, is going to help in the new product development. I have a presentation on how AI and FMEA uh, is going to work together. So that'll be an interesting topic. And then, of course, you know, apply IoT and big data. And now I gave you a step-by-step a, a -step idea, but if, depending on where your organization is in the maturity curve, I think these can be rearranged. Okay. Speaking of which, so when we started... Uh, the vision of EWQMS. Um, I still remember my first meeting with Chad when I when we started about the EWQMS. We were silo softwares uh, at that time. I think around 2002, the idea of enterprise quality man uh, uh, quality management system was taken as a, and we released our first product on EWQMS in 20, 2002. Uh, around 2011, by then all the new standards on 14,001 and 18,000 was all there. So we launched an enterprise quality and integrated management system that would integrate uh, your quality, environmental health and safety into one single system uh, with allowing you about 30% of savings just implementing integrated management system. Fast forward, 2022, uh, towards the fall of 2022, uh, early 2023, we launched the, the idea of platforms, okay? So uh, I'll talk about platforms in a second. So uh, for those of you uh, are um, hearing about uh, our, our suite for the first time, uh, it's a, a fully integrated suite with about 14 different modules. It starts with the tool for managing an overall new product development, you know, manage all your project plans, could be APQP, functional safety, cybersecurity, sort of uh, PPAP, uh, you can all manage them in one system, a tool for managing all your requirements in one place, uh, have, uh, you know, flow down requirements between systems, subsystem components, and also have traceability of these requirements, forward and backward traceability, a tool for developing all your functional safety work products, you know, hard out, safety goals, safety, um, uh, technical safety concepts. I mean, build all your functional safety work products. A tool for develop, I mean, which integrates into your uh, DFMEA, uh, DVPNR, process flow female control plan. Uh, of course, there's FAMIDA, FTA, you know, integrated together. Uh, taking that to your shop floor to conduct in process receiving final inspection a problem solving solution for one problem solving uh, uh, tool, be it quality or environmental health and safety, could be a hardware problem, software problem. What really changes is really the workflow and the information that you capture, but it will be one tool that an entire organization can um, um, you know, uh, implement. Um, uh, MSA, end-to-end uh, uh, audit management, TPM, uh, training and competency management, 
boss as a continual improvement tool. I just realized you're not able to see my cursor move, but I am moving the cursor at change management, um, warranty management, and a document control system that not just helps you manage, implement and Q, uh, IMS and QMS and environmental, but also the entire suite publishing into one single repository. So if you want to look for an approved audit report, you go right into the published version of the document controls. Okay. So there are four different platforms we thought of when, when the, the idea of an integrated suite came in, in terms of a new product development, a EVAV platform, a whole supplier quality management platform that can integrate into your new product, uh, into your um, internal QMS and then uh, uh, IMS QHSE solution. So going back to what we spoke, if you look at what the new modern day automotive QMS needs on the left-hand side, it's quality, environmental health and safety, other compliance needs, an integrated APQP new product development, an EVAB platform, and a supplier management platform is what all ties in together. So you don't you you don't you don't need a knife. You actually need a Swiss Army knife. All right. Okay. Um, so the uh, EWQMS today satisfies this. But so when you're looking at and implementing an automotive QMS, I think your long-term strategy should be something that could be more comprehensive. And then you may not have the resources to implement all of them at the same time, but you can slowly build uh, you know, an, an, a full QMS implementing these systems. Um, one more uh, slide, I, I promise that's the last slide. Um, the idea of a platform strategy. Okay. So when we thought of uh, envisioning the uh, platform strategy, um, our product development met with most of our customers. We talked about what what is your experience? What do you what do you need when we have these? So the big concern was we didn't want those fourteen different modules that we have to jump around. Even though it's in one system, uh, we'd like that to be more easy to access with the platform idea. We are now able to bring all of that with, within a one to two clicks where. 80% of what you have to do today is already prescripted and is right there on your page when you land. When you log in, you see them. Tomorrow, I think uh, our teams are going to be presenting each of these platform and how the uh, ease of use and the access is going to be. Uh, so everything is available on our landing page. You can have all your key metrics or you know could be EVAV, new product, QMS, because now, we are really talking about collaboration. You're no longer siloed. You need information to say what's happening in the uh, the other parts of the organization, and that could be made available. And of course, uh, configurable widgets that will allow you to configure what you want to see. Um, so that's the idea of um, an integrated platform that could help you with uh, your strategy towards implementing an enterprise, uh, a new age enterprise automotive QFS.